hello and welcome to my channel. In this video I'll be binding my own homemade DIY coloring book. So I'm making three of these and I've already bound one of them um, so that I can show you the end result so that you can see where everything is headed. What I've already done is gone through and just stamped out um, all of the images. These are Molly Harrison stamps from Crafters Companion. There was um, a pretty big sale on them during the last, I think, U.S. clearance warehouse sale. So I picked up all of them, um, 10 in total, and, and for this project because I thought they were really beautiful um, illustrations and I myself am uh, making a book for myself to color, but primarily these are going to be presents for my two older nieces who um, are very artistic and um, I think they'll, they'll have the patience to kind of color in some of these finer details. My younger nieces, I'll be making something similar, but I've chosen different stamps that are a little bit more open images or a little bit uh, simpler illustrations. and. Um, It'll, it's a little bit easier for them to color those. So the other thing that I've done with um, this for my older nieces is one, so for each illustration I've given them two copies, one on smooth um, paper that is um, going to be really good for marker coloring if they want to use their markers, and then one I've stamped out onto a uh, color pencil paper, so that has a little bit more tooth to it, and if they um, want to use their coloring uh, pencils, then they'll ultimately probably have better success on um, a paper that's a little bit grippier. And for the cover, um, I've just stamped another image, so this would be the third one uh, of this specific illustration onto some 120 pound paper. Um, the white smooth paper is, uh, or cardstock I should really say, is 100 pounds. So this entire book is, is really, um, it's only 20 pages but it's really thick because I'm using uh, fairly heavy cardstock and um, the back cover here is just lightweight chipboard just to give it that very you know nice professional uh, finish and I've bound it with half inch um, wire loop uh, binding. So let me show you the main um, tool I'll be using to do the binding, which is the We Are Memory Keepers cinch. Um, so I'll first give a little bit of a tour of the cinch, just so that um, you can kind of see all of the moving pieces. Um, first off, there is a locking mechanism here, which will hold down the handle. So once you've released that, then you can start punching holes. Um, on this end is where you punch your holes. Then on this edge here, you can um, hang your wire and feed all of your pages through your wire. And then on the back, as your last step, you'll close off that wire binding so that the pages don't fall out. The other thing that I'll go ahead and take the opportunity to do now since I haven't, underneath here is a um, compartment that you can pull out and that's where all of the um, all of the waste goes from the hole punching. So you want to occasionally just check on this tray and uh, empty it so that it doesn't overfill. This isn't too full so it's not going to really impact the punch hole punching but you just want to make sure that you're um, dumping that out occasionally and then also check it's worth checking the um, each of the hole punches to see if there's paper that is stuck to it anywhere. So here I've got a little bit, this is a little bit clogged here. So you just want to clear things out as much as possible so that they don't obstruct as you punch um, your holes. And then I'm going to go ahead and also just try to use my pick tool to get the pieces of cardstock that are actually stuck to the metal 
um, to release. I think you'll have a smoother punch if you can keep everything nice and clear. And so I'll go ahead and clean the edge. One of the nice things about this um, tool is that it is pretty heavy duty. It's not a very heavy um, tool, but it's it's heavy duty, meaning you can actually punch several sheets, even thick cardstock that I'm using, um, in one go. And it you don't have to apply a ton of force to do that because of how they've designed these punches. Um, what they've done is actually staggered the punches so that they're not all hitting the paper at the same time. And so that means that you're not trying to punch through, you know, 10, 12 holes all in one go. And um, ultimately that makes it a little bit easier on your hands and wrist. Um, if you feel like if you have to do a lot of it so so I like it for that reason it's it's really um, nice it makes quick work of uh, your project and makes the binding just look so much more professional so even though I've used this before this I've only really um, found notebooks for myself um, so this will be the first time that I'm making anything to give away so I'm really excited and trying to take all the precautions and measures I can to make this look as professional and um, nice as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and unlock my mechanism here. I have all of my pages um, stamped and ready to go. I've already also gone through to make sure that everything is <laughs> in the correct orientation so that um, everything is kind of facing the same way. And when I stamp this, by the way, so if you have this stamp set uh, or any of the Molly Harrison stamp sets, I've cut my page to five and a half wide by seven inches tall. And so that allows for about a half inch kind of white space on this left edge here, which is where the wire binding is going to be. So that way, if I bring in this finished product so that you can see that way as you're coloring you don't have to color like the image isn't going to get too close to the wire binding so it's um, going to be really easy to color you don't have to worry about the image getting so close there that it's hard to get your um, whatever your coloring medium is so so um, that's how I arrived at those dimensions then what I am going to do is um, I'm going to start off by um, making sure that all of my pegs here, so each of these kind of um, uh, knobs here can be pulled out. And the reason is because you might have to punch more than the, um, you know, I guess 12 holes because there's they are numbered 1 through 12 so if you're binding something like an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper for a larger notebook you're gonna need to um, punch several times and so the pegs will allow you to determine exactly which holes you want um, punched and which you don't and you'll see that in a second here because I am actually going to have to punch um, 13 holes and so I'm gonna go ahead and um, show you two well I won't show you but I'll talk about a second option so if I wanted instead of punching this 13th hole what I could have done was just try to center my um, page within these 12 holes and that would leave sort of a larger gap at the top and the bottom but then it would mean I would only have to kind of um, run everything through the hole punching the one time 
and I would be done instead of having to run it through the first time to get the first 12 holes and then run it through a second time to get my last hole. But I rather like the look of um, the um, holes being kind of more stretched along the entire length and, and having shorter gaps um, on the two ends. So what I'm going to do is the first pass, I'm going to leave this sliding scale here pushed all the way in. And just to make sure that it doesn't accidentally go anywhere, I'm going to actually tape it down because as we punch, I'm going to make sure that my pages are, are butting up against this uh, guardrail here. And towards that end, I actually want to make myself a faux guardrail on the right side too. So what I've done is I just have a piece of 120 pound cardstock that I've just folded in half. I've got some double sided, or not double sided, but some um, blue tape, painter's tape that I've rolled <laughs> so that it can serve as double sided adhesive. And I'm just gonna take this, butt it up against my um, paper here. And then push down. So now I have sort of a faux guardrail on the right side too. So since we're going to be, um, I'm going to have to do multiple um, hole punches through a lot of pages, I just want to make sure that things are lined up as much as possible. And then to punch, you can hold this down if you feel like you need to. Um, I'll just hold it just from these two here because if your hand is within here, um, the punch here, as it comes down, might bump into your hand. So um, that's one of the reasons why I like having this guardrail here so that things stay in place. I don't feel like I have to hold it down quite as tightly. And there is our first pass. So you can see a little bit of a gap here and we'll get that last hole punched um, on the second time around. So that was the cover that I punched by itself, but I'm gonna grab a few sheets here, not not a ton. I'd rather um, not have to exert too much force, um, just so that it's a little easier on my hands and wrists, and then um, have to punch multiple times. I'd rather do that than really struggle pushing it down. So let's keep on going. Okay, so I have completed the first pass on all of my pages and so now what I'll do is adjust everything so that I can punch just that one last hole. To do that, what I will do is release the sliding guardrail here. Um, I'm at seven inches, um, uh, my page is seven inches tall so I'm going to slide this all the way down so that this meets up here and then I'm going to put just my cover piece in here and let me show you before I do this. Um, on the side here there's actually this little piece here which you can push down. This will help lock in your page on the side here. I'll show you what I mean in a sec. So let me get this page back in. Pushing it all the way down. So I've uh, I slid the guardrail all the way out. So this page here is basically ending at the seven inch mark right here. And what I'm gonna do is, I know it's off camera, so I can try to tilt so that you can see. Um, 
what you want to do is just push this down and it will actually lock into a previously punched hole and that's what keeps this in place. So you still want to um, make sure that it's flush against the back side here. And then what I'm going to do also is pull out pin number two. The reason is because I know I only want to punch one additional hole. And in the event that um, the space left over might start going into um, where hole number two would get punched, I don't want any partial holes to be punched. So if you pull out pin number two, any pins that you pull out, in fact, will not get punched. Um, I don't have to worry about pins 3 through 12 because the paper isn't anywhere near those pins. So even though the whole um, puncher will go through on all of these pins, my paper isn't in any danger of getting partially punched. But it may be close enough to um, hole punch number two here that it could get partially punched and that's not the look that we want. Instead, we wanna just make sure that we're only punching the one hole. So when you're doing your second pass or if you're doing any sort of partial hole punching where you just wanna make sure that you're getting whole, um, you know, full circles instead of partial circles punched out, just you can go ahead and pull out whatever pins you don't um, need or whichever pins you feel might be a little too close to the edge that you might have a partial punch from it. So that's why this one is pulled out. And then I'll go ahead and punch and then I can release the lock. And now you can see we've got our last hole punched. And so I'll go through and do the exact same thing I did earlier. I'm um, going to go ahead and lock that in place and punch. Okay, so I've got all of my pages punched out. And now, um, time to introduce the wire. So I have, um, you can just get these from We Are Memory Keepers um, itself does sell these loop wires. However, if you don't, uh, if you need a different size, if you want to buy in bulk, if um, you want to buy a slightly less expensive price, then um, there are a lot of brands that sell this uh, sort of double loop wire binding. The key is that you need to look for something that says it's two to one ratio. That ratio governs how many loops are there, um, within each uh, inch. So if I place this down here, you'll see um, there's two loops for one inch, uh, which is a little hard to see on my <laughs> black mat since this is black wire, but um, there are other ratios out there. There's three to one, there's four to one, and different binding systems have different ratios. And because they, um, the ratio refers to how close together the holes are, you do have to get the wire to match because each of these loops will go through um, the holes that are punched. So they need to kind of fit that spacing. Okay. So what I'm going to do is um, go ahead and take my fake guardrail off here. On the side here, there is um, this sort of handy dandy system for hanging your wire. So you just hang your wire off on there. The loops are um, off on the ends. And then you can put your pages through these loops. Now, if you want to hide the ends of where 
your um, binding meat, like those two ends do get pinched together when they're closed. If you want to hide that seam so that it's um, not visible from the back or the front, so that it's completely enclosed, you want that to be on the inside of your back cover. So to do that, if I want that open seam to sit on the inside of my back cover, then what I need to do is if I put it on like this, it's going to sit on the outside of my back cover. If I want it to be on the inside of my back cover, what I'm going to do is just flip my back cover over. So this would be, if you were using something pretty, um, this would be the outside of the back cover facing the outside of the front cover. Just as if we were um, to kind of just flip the pages of a book that's uh, already bound. So then this is going to be the inside of my back cover and that's where um, that's how I will stack my pages as I put them onto the wire and this will hide the wire binding inside of our coloring book so I'm going to just fit these on here get them all set in um, in their loops and this um, set of wire binding that I have it's um, I think 12 inches long 11 or 12 inches probably 11 inches um, long so I've got a bit of excess here that I don't need so this little portion here I'm actually just gonna cut that off so to cut it off I'm just going to use some uh, wire cutters and right here, in the middle of this portion here, is where I will snip it. And then if you want, if you don't want that to catch, um, you can always take some um, pliers and then bend that back inwards so that it um, doesn't scratch or doesn't catch anybody. But it's going to be on the inside of the book, the way that we've... Um, you know, placed our um, pages, so it's it's a little bit, it's already less likely to um, scratch anybody. Now we want to go ahead and turn this around so that we're operating on sort of the back side of the cinch. And you just want to make sure that the two open ends here, um, that they sit up against, flush against the back of um, the cinch here. The other thing that you want to um, make note of, oops, the other thing that you want to make note of is the dial on top here. So this dial, to adjust it, you push it down and then you rotate left or right and you'll see this little teardrop shape. Um, that's the indicator that will move as you rotate your dial. And there are numbers that are printed up here. Um, it just probably looks like black circles. I don't know if you can actually read the numbers printed, um, but it's white on black. And the numbers range from 3 eighths to 1 and 1 quarter. And what that is denoting is actually the diameter of the wire um, binding that you're using. So when you buy these coils, um, they come in different sizes, um, not just the ratio of you know how many loops are there per inch, but also how um, large of a diameter um, the, the coil will ultimately be once you close it up. And so that'll determine you know how many pages or how thick your notebook is going to be. I'm using half inch binding, which is a little bit more than I need, but my book is, um, it's just, it's just over a quarter of an inch and, um, pretty, pretty close to maybe three eighths of an inch. But even though I was able to find three eighths inch, um, coils, I figure I'd rather just go up to half an inch and have it be a little bit more 
useful in case I want to have uh, make other size notebooks or other types of notebooks because three eighths of an inch seems um, pretty small to me. Um, so I figured half inch is going to be a little bit more usable and it's better to go a little bit too big than to be too tight because if it's too tight then you might not be able to fit everything that you want for one and second it might be a little bit difficult to turn the pages. And I was buying this in uh, bulk so <laughs> I bought a box of a hundred of these wire um, coils which is probably more than I can use in my lifetime but it is significantly less expensive to buy it at that scale um, per coil when you when you do the math per you know coil than to buy um, spend a little bit less money but then you know buy fewer far fewer because I think if you buy the we are memory keepers ones it, I think it might be like almost two dollars per coil um, which is really expensive for me anyways so um, so I did since I was buying at a larger quantity I wanted to make sure it was a size that was going to be useful outside of this specific project. So what I'm going to do, I have this set to half inch because that's the size coil that I have. I'm going to make sure that my open end is um, is rotated so that both ends can make contact with the back here. So you want both, you want both open ends to make good contact with um, the back of the cinch. And then all you have to do is using the exact same lever that you use to punch the holes in the first place, just go ahead and gently push down. And this dial here governs how far down this will go. So it's not going to go past half an inch. So you don't have to worry about um, pushing too far. Once this will only let it go as far as what you've set in your dial. So now that this is um, closed, you can see how the two ends perfectly meet up and um, there's no gap and this is nicely um, hidden. That seam is nicely hidden on the inside of the notebook. So on the outside you just see um, you know just the coil. You don't see the the open seam where the two open ends uh, meet up. That is um, my little coloring book project. If you like this video, please consider liking, commenting, and sharing. If you have any questions, um, feel free to drop me a line in the comments and I'll do my best to answer if I know the answer. <laughs> um, and until my next video, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Thanks. Bye.